see all of you here. Um, at this time, I think we got a couple selections by the choir. Thank you, Father, for 
is to hear, is to hear for your goodness uh -huh. and your mercy. Oh, and for joining me near your son, Jesus. Joyful noise unto him with songs and make a 
The title of today's lesson is Grace, a present truth. You know, Peter talked about being established in the present truth. And uh, so that's where I got it from. But grace is a gift. And so, uh, you know, when you hear people talk about grace, it's almost like a license to sin. Um, they think that they can do anything once they are the grace and uh, the Lord did everything for them and there's no responsibility for them. I just thought that during this time of the Passover, these days of unleavened bread, it would be appropriate to remind us about what this thing is about. You know, um, grace came about because man broke the law. So there was a law, and then there was sin, and then there was a law added. But then you had to believe. You know, when, uh, when the Lord, when Israel was down in Egypt, the Lord said that he wanted to see the blood on the doorpost. And, um, and if he saw the blood, that he would not allow the death angel to, uh, to come into that house. And so... Now, we don't sacrifice animals, we don't put blood on our doorposts, but we still have to be under the blood. And that's what grace is. It was a free gift. None of us earned the right or, or worked enough for Christ to come and die for us. So it was a free gift. But then the Bible tells us how you even access grace. It tells you when you come under grace and how to access it. And then your responsibilities once you come under grace. And so that's what this lesson is about. We're going to start this lesson out in Romans, the sixth chapter, because this is where everybody want to run to to tell you that, you know, um, you don't have to keep the law. The whole reason for the sacrifice was because man sinned from the very beginning. The first man sinned. And so there was a sacrifice made. The Lord clothed him with coats of skin. He got those skins from an animal that he killed. He sacrificed something so that man didn't have to die for his sin. But we're gonna start this out in Romans the sixth chapter, and we're gonna pick it up at verse 14, six and 14. When you get it, brother, go ahead. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. So, you know, They understand that there's a law. Because now they tell you, you're not under the law. Well, what Paul is talking about here is a different law. He's talking about the law that was added. And he's going to explain it. We're going to read it in just a few minutes. But but now let's go to uh, uh, 1 John 3rd chapter because we need to understand why we, why we even needed a sacrifice. Why we even needed grace. First John 3, read that fourth verse for us. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law. So he says if you commit sin, then you have broken the law. Well, we're going to read in a second about the law. Until the law, sin was in the world. So we just found out sin is the breaking of the law. But then we're going to read. Let's go there. Let's go to... Uh, we, we're not going there yet. We're going we're gonna to work our way through this. Let's go to Romans, the fourth chapter. Romans, the fourth chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 14. Romans 4 and 14. Because he says, if you, trans, if you uh, 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 transgress the law, you commit sin, because sin is the transgression of the law. Romans, the fourth chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 14. Romans 4 and 14. Go ahead. 
For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. So he said, if they which are of the law is heirs, because, you know, Israel seemed to think that all they got to do is keep the law. But there's something much more than that. You do right. have to keep the law. And don't let, you know, don't let nobody minimize that. You absolutely have to keep the law. But he says that the law, uh, if they which are the law be heirs, then faith is made void. Go ahead. And the promise made of none effect. And the promise that was made is of none effect. Well, there's a promise. We know the promise that the Lord made to Israel, that that land was going to belong to Israel. But the promise had far more to do with just it giving some people some land. And we're going to read that because, you know, I, I know that, you know, we constantly talk about the promise that God made to Abraham about how he was going to give that land of Canaan to Israel. And he's, he's going to do that. But we're going to find out there's something much more to that promise than just some land. So he says, if they which are the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promises of none effect. Go ahead. Because the law worketh wrath. He said the law worketh wrath. Well, how does keeping, you know, uh, 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 thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, how is that wrath? He's not talking about that law. He's talking about another law. The law that you broke that caused the, the, something to die. That was the law that Paul is talking about. He's talking about the animal sacrifice law. He said the law worketh wrath. Go ahead. For where no law is, uh -huh. there is no transgression. He said the law worketh wrath. So when you break the law, you have transgressed the law. But he's talking about here both laws. He said, but where uh, the, law, the law worketh wrath. If, he, if God said, do, uh, he, he commanded Adam in the garden. We're going to read it. He commanded the man saying, you may eat of any tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge. It was a commandment. That's what Adam broke. So Adam committed sin because there was a law. And what happened immediately after he committed sin? He brought death on man. Mm -hmm. We just read where there is no law, there is no transgression. You cannot break a law that don't exist. But now he says the law works right. Because anytime you transgress the moral laws, God's moral laws, then you have you brought the wrath of God on you. So he says, the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Let's go to uh, the fifth chapter. Pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. So we know who, sin, who that one man was. That one man was Adam. One man, sin entered into the world. Go ahead. And death by sin. And so soon as he sinned, it brought death. This is the same Paul that just wrote that in the fourth chapter. He said, by one man, sin entered into the world, and death came by that sin. Go ahead. And so death passed upon all men. That's what he mean, the law worketh right. When you sin, then you got to, there's a price to pay. Something has to die. But he says, you know, so death passed upon all men, so that because all have sinned. Go ahead. For that all have sinned. For unto the law, sin was in the world. How is that possible? We just read sin is the transgression of the law. How can you, it just said until the law, sin was in the world. So obviously we're talking about another sin, another law. Because sin is the trans... Bible told us that sin is the transgression of the law. That's what the Bible just said. We read that. Then he said, until the law, sin was in the world. You cannot commit sin. We just read where no law is, there's no transgression. So how can you sin if there's no law? Obviously, there was a law. When God commanded the first man, that was the first law he gave him. So, so we're talking about another law. He says, you know, uh, uh, until the law, sin was in the world. Well, we know that sin is the transgression of the law. So you got to have a law to sin. And if you got to have a law to sin, then we must be talking about another law. Keep going. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. He says sin is not imputed when there is no law. If there is no law, there is no penalty for breaking it. But he said death passed upon all men because all had sinned. So there was a penalty. The penalty came later. 
Let's go to, uh, 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 keep, keep reading, 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Let's go to Galatians, the third chapter, because now he finna tell you about a law that was added. The same Paul that wrote to the Romans, wrote to the Galatians. Galatians, the third chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Galatians 3 and 1, go ahead. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? Because your eye, because whose before eyes, whose eyes, before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Go ahead. This only would I learn of you. He said, this is what I want to know. Go ahead. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. He said, did you receive this word, this, this message by the, hear, uh, uh, by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So he's talking about two things, mm -hmm. about a law and about believing. So he right. says, you know, receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Because that's what faith is, belief. Skip down now to uh, uh, verse 18. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise. Actually, pick it up in verse 17. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 400. Now the covenant was those commandments that the Lord gave to Israel on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And that was the law. So he says, you know, this I say that the covenant that was uh, confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, go ahead. Which was 430 years after. Wait, but the covenant was the law. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about another law that came 430 years later. So he says, the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, go ahead. Cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. He said, it cannot disannul that, that it should make the promise of none effect. He's still talking about the promise, too. Mm. Because that law is tied to the promise. That promise is tied to the law. And it's tied to something else, too. But he says, you know... The covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, it cannot disannul it that it should make the promise of none effect. Go ahead. For if the inheritance be of the law. He said the inheritance. So he's talking about an inheritance. And he's not just talking about it. I'm, he's not, I'm not dismissing the land. Don't, don't get me wrong. But if that's all we had to hope for, Then what about all those folks that died and never got there? It was much more than just some land. So he says, but if the inheritance be of the law, go ahead. It is no more of a prom of promise, but God gave it to Abraham. He said, if promise. it came by the law, then it's not of the promise. But God gave that land to Abraham by promise. He said he gave it to Abraham by promise. Go ahead. Wherefore then serveth the law? He said, what was the purpose of the law then? Go ahead. It was added because of transgression. Oh, it was added because of sin. We found out sin was the transgression of the law. Yeah. So that animal sacrifice law was added because Israel kept sinning. It was added because of transgressions for how long? Go ahead. Till the seed should come. Till the seed should come. And that seed was Christ. So it says it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come. Go ahead. To whom the promise was made. Go ahead. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Go ahead. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promise of God? Is the law against the promise? God forbid. He said God forbid. Absolutely not. And he's not talking about the animal sacrifice law now. He's talking about that moral law. He said, but is it against the promises of God, uh, 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 this animal sacrifice? I'm sorry. He said, is the law against the promises of God? Go ahead. God forbid. Go ahead. For if there had been a law given which could give given life. He said, if there had been a law which could have given life, go ahead. Verily righteousness should have been by the law. Well, guess what Jesus said? The man asked him, what can I do that I might get eternal life? You know what Jesus said? 
if you want life, keep the commandments. So there is a law that could have given life. All we had to do was obey it. The problem was that we never obeyed it. That's right. To this day, That's right. there is not a man sitting here that don't break a law. That's right. But he says, if there had been a law which could have given life, righteousness should have been by the law. If we would have just obeyed, God said that in the day that you eat of that, in other words, in the day that you disobey me, that is the day you're going to die. We could have lived forever. All we had to do was obey, but we did not obey. So then something had to die. Either we was going to die, and if we had to die, then guess what? That promise couldn't be fulfilled because every one of us was going to sin. David, a man after God's own heart, what did he do? He sinned. That's right. Abraham, you know, he chuckled when God said that, you know, uh, uh, he, and he stumbled at unbelief because, he's, you know, God said that you're going to have a child at 99 years old. There's not a man alive that has ever lived beside Christ that didn't sin. Right. That is why he was the only one qualified to pay for your, pay for your sin. Because had he sinned, guess what? He would have had to die for his sin, not for yours. He had to be perfect. And he was the only one that was able to do that. So he says, is the law against the promises of God? God forbid. If there had been a law which could have given life, righteousness should have been by the law. Go ahead. But the scripture have concluded all under he sin. He said the scripture concluded everybody was under sin. That means everybody was guilty. Everybody. So we were all guilty. He said the scripture concluded that all under sin. Go ahead. That the promise by faith. That the promise by faith. Now he's bringing in faith. But faith had always been there. Before, we, before he met Moses on the mountain. He spoke with Abraham, and Abraham was called the father of the faithful because Abraham believed God. So he says, you know, but the promise of faith by Jesus Christ might be given to who? To them that believe. To those that believe. We're going to find out that the scripture is going to tell us that you have access to grace by doing something. You got to do something to come under grace. And I'm not just talking about going and get thrown, thrown in the water either. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what the book is talking about. You know, in John first chapter, John said, To all that received him, gave he power to become sons of God. Let's go to, uh, uh, I'll pick it up at 23. Go ahead. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. You know, but faith had always been around. Man had somehow placed his faith in the commandments, even though he kept breaking them. That's right. But before faith came, the one that we were to have faith in, before faith came, go ahead. We were kept under the law. We were kept under the law. Go ahead. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. You know, even in Jesus' time, you know, the Pharisees, and they kept coming to him. The law says this. The law says that. And they wasn't even keeping them. That's right. You know, the book say, bind burdens, heavy to be, yeah, heavy to be burdened, uh, heavy to be laden. Constantly trying to put burdens on people. Wow. The law ain't supposed to be burdensome. The law is your freedom. You're supposed to keep it with a willful heart. But he says, you know, uh, 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 before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up until the faith that after which should be revealed. Go ahead. Wherefore the law was our school. So that law, that animal sacrifice, was to teach us something. It was to teach us that a price had to be paid for sin. Something had to die. The law was our schoolmaster to do what? Go ahead. To bring us unto Christ, 
that we might be justified by faith. That we might be justified by faith. This, the, the law taught us that we had that something had to die for us. And Christ was the one that was going to come and ultimately pay the price for man. That we, might, uh, that we might be justified by faith. But go ahead. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Go ahead. For ye are all the children of God by faith. He come. said you are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. You got to believe. That's the prerequisite to come under grace. You got to believe. And the book going to tell you that. Let's go to uh, uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Because he was telling you that, you know, that law that was added, you know, 430 years later, you know, it didn't make the promise of none effect. It was added because of transgression. Go ahead, tell them one. Go ahead. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. He said the law having a shadow of good things to come. And he's going to let you know exactly what law he's talking about. It was just a shadow. You know, people always want over to run over to Romans, the fourth chapter, uh, the sixth chapter, you know, when they tell you you don't have to keep the law because you want the grace. But the book is clear. The law, you know, the law that he was talking about, he said, you're not under the law, you're under grace. He was letting you know you're no longer under the penalty of the law. The penalty of the law was death. Because once you came under grace, you was given a free gift. You was getting given a free, a get out of jail free card. Not for your future sins, but for your past sins. Because Paul says, you know, we established the law now. We don't make the uh, we don't we don't cancel the law. We don't make void the law because we believe we establish it. Now we understand that we must keep it. He said, "The law having a shadow of good things to come." Go ahead. And not the very image of the things can never, with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually, make the comers there unto perfect. He said it could never with those sacrifices. So he's talking about the animal sacrifice law. There was no sacrifices on the moral law. The Lord commanded you to keep them. He added the sacrificial law. He says, and it was a shadow of good things to come. It, it was to show you that, you know, uh, 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 it was just a forewarning of what was to come. But he told he he finna tell you that that law you know, if it was if it was perfect, then it would have purged your conscience. You would have started doing things differently. But you didn't. It didn't work. The problem was us, not with the law. You know, the moral law. The problem wasn't with the moral law. The problem was with us. But he says, you know, uh, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, they, they couldn't make the comers there unto perfect. Go ahead. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? He said, then wouldn't they, he asked the question, would they not have ceased to be offered? They they, there would have been no more need to keep offering those sacrifices if it would have just changed your mind. That's what God's trying to do. He's trying to clean this up. This is what got corrupted. He told you, if you look on a woman with lust, you've already seen. This is what the problem is. So he says, you know, then would they not have ceased to be there? You wouldn't keep offering up these animals because now you know better. He going to tell you, go ahead. Because that the worshipers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sin. He said, then you would have had no more conscience. But you, you know, he letting you know that you was constantly, you kept sinning. Your mind didn't change. In those sacrifices, keep reading. But in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance again made of sins every year. You know, because it kept happening. The same thing. There was a daily sacrifice. There was a personal sacrifice. There were high sacrifices, you know, on the high days. There was constant sacrifices. Because man was full of sin. His, his mind didn't change. 
But the Lord offered a better sacrifice for us now. Amen. So he says, you know, uh, in those sacrifices, go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. He said, hey, you know, they didn't do nothing. Why are they paying for our sins? It wasn't even possible that they could take it away. It just taught you that something had to die. Go ahead. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world. Wherefore, when he, who is this he? We're talking about Jesus now. When he come into the world, go ahead. He said, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. But the Lord established the animal sacrifice law. The Lord did that. The Lord told Moses in Leviticus, the fourth chapter, if a man sin through ignorance against any of the commandments which are not to be done and be guilty of them, then he should take his sacrifice and take it to the priest and he shall kill it and sprinkle the blood and all of that. The Lord did that. But now he's letting you know. He said when he came into the world, he said sacrifice and offering you didn't want. Why did it take for him to, the prophet had already told you that. You know what Saul told, uh, Samuel told Saul? He said to obey is better than sacrifice. He didn't want your sacrifice. He wanted you to obey him. So he says, you know, when he come into the world, he says, sacrifice an offering you didn't want. Go ahead. But a body has now prepared. He said, but you have prepared a body for me. That was going to be one final sacrifice. And either you was going to come under that sacrifice or you was going to have to pay for that sin. That's what that, gra that grace was. We didn't do anything to earn. That was a gift. It was a present that God gave to this creature that's so full of sin. It was a gift. He said, but you know, a body you have prepared me. Go ahead. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. He said he didn't have no pleasure in all of that. They just kept, you know, just kept putting in his face how sinful you were. He ain't had no pleasure in that. Go ahead. Then said I, no. He said, then said I, go ahead. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do the will, to do thy will, O God. He said, I come to do your will, O God. The one that is written about in the volume of the book. And it's written about in the volume of the book from Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created. We're talking about Jesus. Yeah. And in the last chapter of, of, of your Bible, it says, you know, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life. And that tree of life was Jesus. And he coming all, all between the pages, we reading about him. But he said, I come to do your with The bulls and goats couldn't do it. But I'm going to do it. Go ahead. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Go ahead. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. He said, I come to do your will. He took away that animal sacrifice. That's why we don't sacrifice animals no more. The last sacrifice that man had uh, that, that God established was on the Passover when Jesus ate the Passover with his disciples on that Passover day. And it's fitting, like I said, that we in the Passover. Mm -hmm. This is still the Passover day. But on that Passover day was the last animal sacrifice that the Lord accepted. Because when Jesus died, he became the sacrifice. And that's when he told his uh, uh, disciples and apostles, he said, you know, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Mm -hmm. He said, eat this, this bread, which is my body, and drink this wine, which is my blood. As often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me because he became that perfect sacrifice. But he says, you know, he, he took away the first that he may establish the second. Go ahead. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ or Jesus Christ once for all. By the which will, by God's will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He died one time. 
you're not going to die again. And either you're going to come up under his blood, because that's what that Passover represented, coming under the blood of that lamb. And either you're going to come under his blood, or you're going to pay for your own sins. Something's going to die. You can't kill animals no more. You're not accepting that. There's one sacrifice that he's going to accept. And then everybody else he tossing in the fire. That's right. So you go either come under that sacrifice or you're going in the fire. Let's go to uh let's go to uh Romans the fifteenth chapter. Romans the fifteenth chapter. Read up at verse 1, Romans 15 and 1. Go ahead. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. He said, as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee. Who was those that reproached him? Those that sinned against him. Mm -hmm. He said, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Let's go over to Psalms and read it. Psalm 69. Psalm 69. We're going to pick it up at verse uh, 7. Psalm 69 and 7. Psalm 69 and 7. Go ahead. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame have covered my face. He said for your sake. He said let everyone please his neighbor to his edification. He said you know because even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written. The reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. He said you know uh, uh, because for thy sake I have borne reproach. I took all of this, Lord, for you. He said, for thy sake, I have borne reproach. Go ahead. I am become a stranger unto my brethren. He said, I have become a stranger to my brethren. Go ahead. And an alien unto my mother's children. Go ahead. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach of thee are fallen upon me. He said, the zeal of your house have eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee have fallen upon me. This is Jesus talking. Skip, go back up to verse 4. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. You see what he said? He said they hate me without a cause. He was only, you know, doing stuff for, for man. And yet man put him to death. Hmm. All that he suffered, he suffered so that this man didn't have to end up in the fire. That he could live forever. He said, you know, they that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. Go ahead. They that would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully. He said, those that would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully. Hold your place here. Let's go over to Psalms, the 53rd chapter. Psalms, the 53rd chapter. I'm sorry. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. He said, they that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. They that would destroy me, being my enemy wrongfully, are mighty. Psalms 53. Isaiah, I'm sorry, Isaiah, I don't know why I keep saying Psalms. Isaiah 53. Go ahead, pay, verse 1. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before his, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he have no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Go ahead. He is despised and rejected of men. This all happened on the, on the past. So this is what he went through. He just said, you know, they were my enemies wrongfully. 
And ultimately, it led to his death, which gave us access to life. But he says, you know, uh, 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 he's despised and rejected of men. Go ahead. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. He said, well, you know, he was acquainted with grief and we hid our face from him. To this day, people, we still do the same thing. We really need to look at ourselves. Stop looking at what's wrong with the world and look at ourselves and see what's wrong with us. Because the problem, like Michael Jackson said, is really in the mirror. <laughs> but he says, you know, he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Go ahead. Surely he had borne our grief. He said, but he borne our griefs because we were supposed to pay that, pay, pay that price. He said, he, uh, uh, he is borne our griefs. Go ahead. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He said he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. Go ahead. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And with his stripes we are healed. So we thank God for that gift. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Jesus. It's too bad that man had to be this sinful, that, he had to, that God had to come and die for us. But he is what healed us. The animals couldn't do it. It says, with his stripes we are healed. Go ahead. All we like sheep have gone astray. Because he said all have sinned. The, uh, uh, the uh, book have concluded all under sin. The prophet telling you the same thing. All we like sheep have gone astray. Go ahead. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. And the Lord laid on him all of our sin. Go ahead. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he opened up not his mouth. Go ahead. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off off the land of the Verse living. 10. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He said it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Go ahead. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He said when he became the offering for sin, because it used to be the animal sacrifice, but now it's him. Once for all, he says. So, uh, 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 he, uh, uh, when he, uh, when you shall make his soul an offering for sin, go ahead. He shall see his seed. He said he gonna see his seed. Go ahead. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Let's go back to Psalm sixty-nine. Pick it up at verse four. So now you see why the prophet had written that they that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. All was guilty. Everybody despised him. Because that's what you show the Lord when you don't obey him. But he says, you know, uh, 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 verse 4, go ahead. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully. He said they were his enemies. Wrongfully. He didn't do nothing to them. He came to die so that they may have life. But he says, you know, being my enemies wrongfully, I'm mighty. Go ahead. Then I restored that which I took not away. Then I restored that which I didn't take away. We're going to find out what it was that was taken away and who took it away. Because he didn't take it away, but he restored it. Let's go now to Genesis, the second chapter. Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis 2 and 7. Go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. So he put man in this garden. He gave man life. He put him in this garden and he said, you know, uh, he gave him all of these trees. You know, two of them are literal and two of them are symbolic. The two literal trees, one good for food and one pleasant to the eyes. And then those symbolic trees, the word of God and, and Satan. 
So he says, uh, out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Go ahead. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Skip down to verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man. Saying, so that was your law. The first man. We read over in Romans about one man sinned into, into this world and death by sin and death passed upon all men because all have sinned. That means everybody disobeyed. But that was the commandment right there. God commanded the man, go ahead. Saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. He said you can have everything in this garden, including the tree of life. Yeah. That's why, you know, when Paul said if there had, could, had been a law which could have given life, verily righteousness would have been by the law. We could have lived forever. All we had to do was obey and even once you come under grace, you know what you have to do? You still have to believe and you still have to obey. Because Paul talked about, you know, uh, those that, that were once enlightened and the tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they should fall away, it's impossible to renew them again to repentance. Mm -hmm. So that means once saved, always saved. Don't fly in the face of scripture. So, so he says, you know, of the tree, uh, uh, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Go ahead. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So he let him know, if you eat of this tree, you're going to die. Man ate of the tree, and he died. Let's see what the consequence was. Go over to the third chapter. Pick it up at uh, verse 6, and then we're going to skip. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So now they done broke the commandment. The Lord said, the day you're going to eat, uh, that you eat, you're going to die. Skip down now to verse uh, 22. <clears throat> and the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat, and live forever. So you can't have them both. You can't have sin and righteousness. You're going to either partake of one tree. He said, you know, uh, 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 let the fruit be uh, good or let it be evil. But you can't have both. So now he says, you know, now let's he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So he didn't want man to live forever in that condition. Because now man know what it is to sin, and man going to keep sinning. So what did the Lord do? Go ahead. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Man had lost access to life. He was under the death penalty. We just read over in Psalms, the 69th chapter, when Jesus died, he said, I restored what I took not away. Jesus didn't take away your access to the tree of life. Man did, but he restored it. That's why he said, being my enemies wrongfully, they were mighty. He said, but I restored what I didn't take away. What he didn't take away was your access to life. Jesus said in the 22nd chapter of Revelation, he said, blessed is the man that do these commandments that he may have right to the tree of life. So Paul had asked the question, you know, is the promises against, the, uh, is the law against the promises? He said, God forbid. If there had been a law which could have given life, righteousness would have been by the law. There was a law that, was, that could have given life. All man had to do was obey it. Problem is, once man learned to disobey, he continued on that course. And the bulls and goats couldn't change your mind. Because it really wasn't a big price. But now when Jesus died, and you know that you either going to come under that blood, and you're going to get it right, or you're going to go in the fire yourself, now you got something on your mind. Now you got something to think about. And maybe by constantly, you know, uh, uh, staying in this word, that you will learn that, no, I can't do that because it might cost me a seat in the fire. Amen. 
the Bulls and Ghosts couldn't get it done. They said, now, you know, uh, the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. You get one sacrifice this time. You get one chance to get this right now. And by now, you got the history. You got, you got the history. You can look back and see what it cost when you didn't obey. When you took that sacrifice lightly. But now there's only one more chance because something's still going to die for that sin. Something's going to die. And either you're going to place it at the altar and let the Lord pay for it. Or you're going to be the sacrifice up on the altar. But something's going to pay for it. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Revelation, the second chapter. He said it is well. Revelation 2. Because Jesus touched, we just read, you know, uh, uh, he said, I restored what I didn't take away. And he restored it at his death. Revelation 2 and 7. Go ahead. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life. Oh, so you got to overcome some stuff. Because the mind is desperately wicked. If you follow your mind, you're in trouble. You got to follow the word of God. So he says, to the one that overcome, I will give to eat of the tree of life. Go ahead. Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Well, that's what he didn't take away. But that's what, he, that's what he's going to restore. That's what the prophet told you. In order to understand the new book, you got to understand the whole. This story was already told by the time you got to Matthew. By the time you got to Malachi, it was already it, the story had already been told about the one who's going to come and pay for the sins of the people. That's right. Daniel told you that the Messiah was going to come and that he was going to take away the animal sacrifice. We just read in the Psalms how he was going to die and he was going to restore what he didn't take away, which was access to the tree of life because he didn't take that away. Man's own decisions took that away. Let's go to uh, John the sixth chapter. John six. Pick it up at verse fifty-three. John six and fifty-three. Six and fifty-three. Go ahead. Then Jesus said unto them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. He said, if you don't eat this, eat this flesh and drink this blood, he said, you ain't got no life coming. You don't have no life in you, meaning you're going to die, and that's it. Go ahead. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life. He said, but the one that will eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life. Go ahead. And I will raise him up. At the last day. He said, he's going to have eternal life. And I'm going to raise him up at the last day. You know, some left. Like, you know, what is wrong with him? Talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And finally, he broke it down to them. Skip down to verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. He said, it's the spirit that's going to give you life. He said, because, you know, if you don't eat my flesh and drink his blood, you don't have no life. And now he's letting you know that it's the spirit that's going to give you life. He said, the flesh profits nothing. Keep reading that. The flesh prof profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's what he was telling them to consume, consume these words. That's what man was supposed to consume from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Man disobeyed it and cost man death. So he says, you know, the spirit is what's going to give you life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That was what he was telling man to consume. 
Go back up to uh, 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 verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. He said, this is the will of him that sent me. He said, everyone that sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life. Go ahead. And I will raise him up at the last day. Because we're going to die. It's given unto man once to die. After that's the judgment. So we're going to die. Don't, don't, don't be sorry. You know, uh, 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 Paul explained, you know, uh, told him uh, in Thessalon uh, Thessalonians or Corinthians, he said, you know, uh, um, he said, comfort one another with these words. Mm -hmm. You know, the word of God, we're going to die. That's right. That ain't no big deal. What we worried about is what's going to happen when the Lord returns. Because either we going to the kingdom or we going in the fire. Ain't no, ain't no other option. Lord said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, if you see the Son and believe on him, you may have everlasting life. Over to the 17th chapter of John. Because, uh, you know, you say, well, we ain't seen him. John the 17th chapter. Jesus here is praying to the Father. And he says, I want you to sanctify those that you have given me. Uh, pick it up at verse... Uh, Pick it up. Uh, pick it up at verse six. I have manifested the name, thy name, unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Jesus said, "I made known your name unto the men that you gave me out of the world." Go ahead. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. He's talking about his disciples. He said, you know, they were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Go ahead. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. He said, now they know that everything that I have came from you. Go ahead. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. He said, I gave them the words, Father, that you gave me. Go ahead. And they have re received them. He said, and they received them, those words. That's what was going to give you life. He said, I gave them the words that you gave me, and they received them. Go ahead. And have known surely that I came out from thee, and they and they have believed that thou didst send me. He said, they know that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. Go ahead. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which have, which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Skip down now to verse 17. I think my mic went up. Get down to verse 17. Go ahead. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He said, Lord, set them apart through thy truth, your word. So he said, you know, set them apart through your word, Lord. Go ahead. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself. He said, as you have sent me into the world, I've sent them into the world. And he said, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Go ahead. That they also might be sanctified through the truth. Go ahead. Neither pray I for these alone. He said, you know, because we just read, you know, the one that sees the, uh, the Son of Man and believes on him, you know, he said he's going to raise them up at the last day. But when Jesus prayed to the Father, he said, Father, you know, I gave them your word and they believed him and they know that I came from you. I don't have a technical thumb for none of this. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you know, uh, he said, I gave them your word. They believed that I came from you. And now, Father, sanctify them through your truth. He said, just as you have sent me into the world, Father, I have sent them into the world. He said, for their sakes, uh, he said, but I don't just pray for these, those disciples and apostles that they were with him. He said, I'm not just praying for them. I pray for those also which shall believe on me through their work. Because that's what we have. We have the law, which is the Old Testament, and we have the testimony of the apostles. That's what we, and that's why we believe. And Jesus prayed for us. He said, you know, so, so we don't have to see him. Uh, it was never about we read over in Psalm, that was, you know, uh, in Isaiah, there was no comeliness 
that you should desire him. It was never about looking at him. It was about the message that he brought. That's right. It was about the word of God. John told you in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was made manifest, uh, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's what was important, the word. That's right. So that you would have the information that you need in order to get saved. That's right. So Jesus said, you know, uh, I'm not just praying for these apostles. But for those that will believe on me through their word. Because they believe, they saw me. And they believe. And now they're going to be sanctified by this word and they're going to go teach others. And I'm praying for those too. So that prayer covered you. And me. Thank God. Amen. Praise God, Jesus. Let's go to uh, Romans the fifth chapter. Romans the fifth chapter. Because that's something you got to have in order to come under faith. I mean, uh, come under grace. You got to believe. You got to believe. If you don't believe, then you're wasting your time. Romans 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Therefore, being justified by faith. You were clear the guilt. You were guilty. That's what justified means. Right. You were clear the guilt because you believed. Right. Justified by faith. Go ahead. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. By whom also we have access by faith into his into Oh, his he grace. said we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. That's right. You can't even get to grace unless you believe. He says, by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Go ahead. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So in order to come under grace, you first got to believe. That was the first command. Hear, O Israel. You had to hear something and you had to believe it. That's what Abraham did. Let's go to uh, Romans the fourth chapter. Pick it up at verse 1. Four and one. Go ahead. What shall we say then? That Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found. What but what, what was it so special about Abraham? What was it that he had? What shall we say then that that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh is found? Go ahead. For if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory. But not before God. He said if he was justified by works, then he can boast of something that he did. He said, but not before God. Go ahead. For what said the scripture? He said, what did the scripture say? Go ahead. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. So that's the first requirement. You have access into grace by faith. He said the scripture said that Abraham believed God. Go ahead. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. And that faith was counted to him for righteousness. Go ahead. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckon of grace. He said if you work for something, then that ain't a free gift. They owe you something. That's the difference. Grace is a free gift. You can't, you can't earn that. It's free. He said to him that worketh is the reward not reckon of grace, but of debt. They owe you. If you work for it, then they owe you that. Go ahead. It's not a free gift. Go ahead. But to him that worketh not. He said, but to the one that worketh not. Go ahead. But believe it on him that justified the ungodly. Now, he's not telling you that Abraham didn't do no works. Because we're going to find out Abraham did some works. But at this point, the first thing that Abraham did was God said, Abraham, do this. And Abraham believed. He didn't even tell Abraham to do nothing. But Abraham believed God. So he says, you know, uh, to him that worketh not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly. Go ahead. His faith is counted for righteousness. His faith 
is counted for righteousness. Go ahead. Even as David also described the, bl the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. Go ahead. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. He said, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. But go ahead. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? He said, you know, come this blessedness Upon the surface, in other words, is this just, just for Israel only? Go ahead. Or upon the uncircumcision also? Go ahead. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. He said, you know, uh, is this just for Israel or is it for the uncircumcised the Gentiles as well? He said, because we said that faith was kept reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Skip down to uh, uh, verse 20. Actually, no, keep reading. We got time. Keep reading. He will... Verse 10. Verse 10. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? You know, he didn't get the, uh, the, the circumcision until after that. So he was uncircumcised. And this is they talking about circumcision of the flesh. But, but Abraham at that point was uncircumcised. He was new to the word of God. He didn't know anything. But go ahead. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Go ahead. And he received the sign of circumcision. He said he received the sign of the circumcision. What was it? Go ahead. A seal of the righteousness. A seal of the righteousness. It was a token that you're going to do what I said to do. He said it was a seal of the righteousness of the faith. Go ahead. Which he had yet being uncircumcised. He said it was a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised. But he believed. Go ahead. That he might be the father of all of them that believe. That he might be the father of all of them that believe. Go ahead. Though they be not circumcised. Go ahead. That righteousness might be imputed unto them also. He says so that righteousness might be imputed to them as well. Go ahead. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Go ahead. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham. So he's still talking about the promise. He said a promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed. Go ahead. Through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. He said that promise came from faith. It was not by the law. That's why he said, you know, uh, is the law against the promise? No, it's not against it. But you had to keep the law. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Go ahead. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. He said if, if all you got to do is, is keep the law, you know, if, if those which are of the law be heirs, then faith is made void. What's the point of having faith? He said if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. Go ahead. And the promise made of none effect. And the promise, but God gave it to him by promise, not by the law. Abraham hadn't done nothing. He simply believed. And God gave it to him by promise. Go ahead. Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Skip down now to uh, uh, verse uh, 20. He staggered not at the promise of God. He said he didn't stagger at the promise of God. Go ahead. Through unbelief. But was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. He said he stopped, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. God said do it. He didn't stagger. He didn't hesitate. Go ahead. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised. And that's what he did. He was fully persuaded that whatever God said, he was able to do it. Go ahead. He was able to also to perform. Go ahead. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Keep going. Now it was not written for his sake alone. He said, now that was not just written for Abraham's sake. Go ahead. That it was imputed to him, but for us also. He said, but for us also. Go ahead. To whom it shall be imputed. To whom it shall be imputed. Go ahead. If we believe on him. That if we have that faith. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus from the dead. But we got to have that faith. Abraham had faith and he was called the father of the faithful. 
And he didn't stagger when God said, do it, Abraham did. God said, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Abraham, like, you know, <laughs> I'm 99 years old. Well, his wife laughed. But he knew that God was able to do what he said he was going to do. Keep going. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Let's go to uh, Genesis, the 15th chapter. Because we keep talking about what Abraham did and didn't do. Let the Bible tell you what happened. Genesis, the 15th chapter. Genesis 15. Pick it up at verse 1 and then we're going to skip. Genesis 15 and 1. Go ahead. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. You know, he telling Abraham, you know, I'm going to give you this. Abraham, like, hey, this my servant is going to be my heir. The Lord said, no, I'm going to give you a son. But he says, you know, uh, fear not, Abram. I'm your shield and your exceeding great reward. Skip down now to uh, uh, verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. He said, Look toward heaven and count the stars. If you can count them, that's how your seed going to be. Mm. That's how many seeds you're going to have. Abraham at this point didn't have no children. He said, My, my servant, Eliezer of Damascus, is my, you know, going to be my heir. Mm. But go ahead. And he believed in the Lord. He, the Lord said, this is how your seed going to be, Abraham. And Abraham believed the Lord. Go ahead. And he counted it to him for righteousness. Abraham, what did Abraham do? <laughs> what did he do? Believe. Nothing. He simply believed. And it was counted to him for righteousness. Go ahead. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of earth, of the Chaldees. Let's go now to uh, the 22nd chapter of Genesis. So at first he said, Abraham, you know, look to a heaven. If you can count, that's how your seed going to be. And Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Genesis 22, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Now the Lord going to tell Abraham to do something. And Abraham still didn't stumble. Genesis 22 and 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass after these things that God did tip Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Because he had uh, Ishmael already, but Ishmael was not the seed of his wife. And Abraham didn't think he was going to have no children by his wife. And the Lord gave him Isaac. And, Lord, and Abraham loved Isaac. So now he says, you know, take now those, your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Go ahead. And offer him there for a burnt offering. Now the Lord gave Abraham a child by his wife. And now the Lord is going to try Abraham and see if Abraham really believed. So he said, I want you to take him up to the land of Moriah and offer him up. Go ahead. For a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee. Go ahead. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. The Abraham didn't question him. He said, okay. He packed his grip and he went on about it. Go ahead. He said he rose up early in the morning. Go ahead. And saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clad the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the axe, and I, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? 
And Abraham said. So so Isaac knew, you know, that there's something gotta die. You know, where's the where's the lamb? But but you know, Abraham believed God, you know, and and even if he had to offer up, because apparently he was ready, Isaac was as good as dead, had not the Lord said, Stop. Isaac was dead meat. Because Abraham, that's how much faith he had. He knew that if God said do this, God was able, even if he rose him up again after he sacrificed, he knew God was going to do, God was able to do whatever he said. <clears throat> but now, you know, uh, uh, Isaac said, you know, where's the lamb for the offering? Go ahead. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And God did provide. You know, he just, uh, at this time, he provided Isaac for Abraham. And he said, go off him. You say you believe me, go off him. And Abraham went to off him. Go ahead. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an offer, uh, altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him upon the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Hey, uh, Isaac was dead. If the Lord hadn't stopped him, because he was following the commandment. That's what, that's what God requires of us. It's one thing to say you believe. Right. But when it's time to do something, are you willing to obey? Abraham obviously did. So now he says, you know, Abram stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou any, anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withhold thy son, thine only son, from me. You see, what uh, this is what James was telling you about. The book of James. When he said faith without works is dead. You can say you believe all you want. But what if somebody needed something? Are you willing to do something? Right. Because it's one thing to believe. It's something else when you actually got to put, you know, the pedal to the metal. You know, when the rubber has to meet the road. Then that's what people hesitate. But, but the Lord said, you know, uh, don't touch this kid. I know you fear me. Seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, Isaac. Let's go now to uh, Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians, the third chapter. Read one verse, verse 29. Galatians 3 and 29. You got it, brother. Go ahead and read it. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. He said, if you belong to Christ, then you Abraham's seed and you also are an heir according to the promise. Not according to the law, but according to the promise. And that promise had much more than just, you know, you going and dwelling on some land. Mm -hmm. The Bible won't tell you what that land represented. Because it was much more than just giving Israel a plot of land. They had a plot of land. They messed up. They got kicked out. But this time when they go back, it's going to be much more than just some land. Let's go to uh, John the 10th chapter. Pick it up at verse uh, 7. John 10 and 7. Said, if, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. But Jesus is going to let you know I'm the only way. I'm the only way for you. You got to come this way. And if you don't, then you got a problem. But go ahead, 10 and 7. Go ahead. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. 
All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. He said, I'm the door. You got to go this way. If you want access to the, to the kingdom, if you want access to the tree of life, I'm that door. You got to go through me. Go ahead. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He said, by me, if you enter in, you're going to be saved. Go ahead. And shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I came to give them life and an abundant life. And that ain't talking about abundance of things. It's talking about eternal life. But he says, you know, uh, uh, I'm that door. You got to go through me. Let's go to uh, James, the second chapter. So we see that you got to have faith. You have, uh, 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 by faith, you have access into this grace wherein we stand. So we got to have faith. And Abraham, you know, Abraham believed God. But Abraham also obeyed God. J uh, James 2. Pick it up at verse 14, James 2 and 14. Go ahead. What does it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? So, so yeah, you need faith. But can your faith save you? Go ahead. If a brother or a sister be naked and... Now he broke it down to some simple terms that everybody can understand. Because what if you were this brother or you was this sister that needed somebody, that needed some help, and he finna spell it out to you. Go ahead. And destitute of daily food. And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Go ahead. Even so faith, if it have not works, if it have not works, it's dead. Being alone. That's how faith is. You can have all the faith you want, but if you ain't going to do nothing about it, if you ain't going to show that you believe, then your faith means absolutely nothing. Because Abraham showed that he believed God. The Lord told Abraham was ready to offer up his son, which is something that only God was willing to do at that time. And Abraham said, let's go, son. But now he's letting you know that you can have faith if you want. But if you ain't going to do nothing about it, your faith don't mean nothing. Go ahead. Yeah. A man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. He said, you know, uh, show me your faith without your works. I'm going to show you my faith by my works because I'm going to do something. I'm going to show you that. And, and you show faith every day when it's sunny outside. You don't put on the coat because you believe you're going to be too hot. That's, that's faith in action. When it's cold outside, you look out, you see it's cold or snowing or freezing. What you going to do? You're going to put on the coat because you believe that you're going to freeze. Mm -hmm. You can have all the faith you want. You can walk out there. It's 30 below zero. You can walk out there in shorts <laughs> if you want to. And have all the faith in the world, but that faith ain't gonna keep you warm. That's right. So you show faith every day by the things you do. And that's what he's telling you here. If you really believe, you're gonna show it. Go ahead. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But would thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So don't you know that faith without works? Is dead. Go ahead. Was not Abraham my father justified by works? Now he, you know, Abraham believed, but then when he offered up Isaac, he was justified. Mm -hmm. His faith was justified. All that he may have done up until that point, the Lord forgave all of that. Because he said, Now I know that you believe me, yeah. seeing you have not withheld nothing from me. Your son, your only son, that you didn't get, you had been longing for all your marriage. I told you to go kill him. And you was, he was a dead kid. So he says, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Go ahead. See as thou how faith wrought with his works. He said, don't you see how faith 
worked alongside his works. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. By works was faith made perfect. He said by works was his faith made perfect because he showed that he believed. Go ahead. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed into, unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. So, so in other words, it's like, you know, Paul said to the Romans in the 10th chapter, you know, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, you can call upon the name of the Lord and you, should be, you can be saved. But Paul went on to explain some things. That first, you got to hear something. And then you got to believe it. And then you got to obey it. And if you do those things, then you can call upon the name of the Lord and you can be saved. Mm -hmm. And he meant that. And that's what the word of God teaches. And that's what James is saying. He said, you see how then by works a man is justified and not just by faith. You got to do something. Go ahead. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? Go ahead. For as the body, for as the body without the spirit is dead. So if you had a body and there wasn't no breath in it, you'd have a dead body. As the body without the spirit is dead, faith without works is dead just as well. If you say you believe, then you need to be showing it. And I, like I said, this it just seemed the appropriate lesson at this time. We're in the midst of the Passover, you know, where Christ died for our sins, and we needed to be reminded about what this thing is all about. Amen. Let's go now to uh, um, sec, uh, 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter. Because I, I quoted this earlier, but now we're going to read it. 1 Samuel 15, chapter. You know, the Lord had told Saul to go kill the Amalekites and don't save nothing. And Abraham, you know, uh, uh, Saul came, you know, when Samuel came back, he's like, what's the sound of this bleeding that I'm hearing in my ears? You know, when Saul was going to try to put it off on the men, well, they wanted to offer up a sacrifice unto God. So they kept the best of the stuff to offer up to God, to God a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. First Samuel 15, pick it up at uh, First Samuel 15 and 20. I'm going to second Samuel. 15 and 20, go ahead. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. And have brought Agag, the king of, the, of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took the spoil, the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of things, which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God and Gilgal. You know, book said there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, they probably thought this was a good idea, that now we got something that we could go off up to the Lord. The Lord wasn't concerned with what they was going to offer up. The Lord sent them on a mission, and they were supposed to obey it, and they disobeyed. Saul disobeyed because he was king, and he let the people do it. He said, so uh, they took the spoil, uh, took of the spoil, the sheep, the chief of the things which should have been destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord in Gilgal. Go ahead, and verse 22. And Samuel said, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? As in obeying the voice of the Lord? Do you think the Lord wants your sacrifice? He don't want your sacrifice. He wants you to obey. Your sacrifice came as a means of, of paying a price for your disobedience. So your sacrifice was just a reminder of your disobedience. He didn't want the sacrifice. He wanted you to obey. He said, as the Lord is great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as obeying the voice of the Lord. Go ahead. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. If you sacrifice, then that means that you done messed up. But if you obey, that means you believe God. Go ahead. And to hearken than the fat of rams. Go ahead. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. He said rebellion is like witchcraft to the Lord, and the Lord utterly hates that. Mm -hmm. So he said, but uh, rebellion is as uh, uh, the sin of witchcraft. Go ahead. And stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. 
because thou has rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. So, you know, you said, well, okay, yeah, the Lord did that to Saul. You know, and I can see how the Lord, you know, would do that to Saul. Well, you need to see how the Lord would do it to you as well. Because if he didn't spare his chief men, the Lord chose Saul. Uh, 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 Saul. Yeah. And he said, you know, and he rejected him because he disobeyed. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Romans the third chapter. Romans the third chapter. So now Paul is going to ask about, you know, uh, now that we under grace, because you come under grace by getting baptized. That's when you come under grace. But before you can get baptized, you have to believe the word of God. And you have to understand that there's only two places that you can end up, either the kingdom or the fire. So you come under the blood of Christ, which is under that Passover blood. You come under the blood of Christ by going into the water coming under his blood. Romans 3. Pick it up at verse 21. Romans 3 and 21. Romans 3 and 21. Go ahead, bro. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Go ahead. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. He said the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus, unto all and on all that believe. Go ahead. For there is no difference. Go ahead. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. So now, God has, once you come under this grace, once you come under the blood of Christ, he will forgive you for all your sins, whatever they were. He has forgiven you. But it says for the remission of sins that are past. And now he going to let you know because now once you want, because we read earlier that the bulls and goats couldn't change, uh, uh, couldn't change the conscience of man. Fast potato to the kind, couldn't clean up your mind. It wasn't no big deal. But now Christ has forgiven you for all your past sins. We read that in Hebrews. The bull, bulls and goats couldn't get the job done. Uh, 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 then they would have would they have not have ceased to be offered because that man once purged would have had no more consciousness of sins. So we read that. So now, once you come under the blood of Jesus, he said, <coughs> for the remission of sins, <coughs> excuse me, that are past. Now all your past sins are forgiven. That means that all that stuff that you messed up on, all of that's been wiped clean. You've been given a clean slate. It was a free gift. You ain't do nothing. You simply believe, and you went and got in the water and came up under his blood. Just as Israel simply killed the blood, I put the blood on their doorpost. He was just looking for the blood. He wasn't looking for righteousness. He wasn't looking for anything else. He was looking for the blood. So now you come under the blood. All your past sins have been forgiven. Now Paul asked the question. Now you under grace. Verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? So now do we just do away with the law because now we believe? God Go ahead. forbid. God forbid. Yeah, we established the law. Now you got to do something. You know what you got to do? But we just read James said faith without works is dead. He said do we make void the law through faith? God forbid. No. You now we now we establish the law. You know how you establish the law? You obey it. Now all your past sins have been forgiven. If you don't obey, guess what? Now you in trouble again, and Christ only gonna die one time. Now you got something to think about before you go and do something that you know God is against. Either you willing to go into the fire. Or you're going to say, hold on, let me, let me, hold on. <laughs> let me reconsider this. The bulls and goats didn't do that for you. Because you can just keep offering them. 
But now you don't have no more sacrifice. Something still got to die for sin. That's right. All your past has been cleaned up. Now you know that I cannot get come back under the penalty of the law because the penalty of the law is guess what? Death. The wages of sin is death. That means if you sin, you have earned a spot in the fire. Wages, you earned that. But a gift of God was eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That grace. It was a free gift. All you had to do was make up your mind that I'm going to walk in this newness of life. That's what he's going to tell you. Um, we'll read it a little bit. Let's go to uh, the 8th chapter of Romans. Pick it up at verse 1. Romans 8 and 1. So now you're under grace. You walk in the newness of life. You have established the law. You made the law firm in your life. That I'm going to do this. And I hope that's what you did when you came under grace. Because the Lord says it's better not to vow. Vow to vow and not keep it. So I hope you did. I hope that's what you decided. And if that's the case, then Paul is going to explain some things here. Romans 8, pick it up at verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them. Now you won't be condemned. There's no condemnation to them. Go ahead. Which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He said, now you're not walking after the flesh. Now you're walking after the spirit. You are keeping the commandments of God. Skip down now to uh, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. He said, those that are, then you're going to do what, whatever the flesh say. Go ahead. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. But now if you got this word of God, now you're going to obey this word. Go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death. See, that's what got you in trouble in the first place. The book say, Eve saw that it was a tree to be desired to make one wise. And so she took of the fruit thereof and gave it to her husband and he did eat too. That's carnally minded. You think you're getting something. To be carnally minded is death. Go ahead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. He said the carnal mind is opposed to God. Your mind is out to kill you. That's why, you know, uh, uh, that it had to have some effect on the consciousness. The, the sacrifice it had to have some effect on the consciousness of man. Because if it couldn't change your mind, you were still condemned. You were still doomed to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So he says, you know, uh, to be kindly minded is death, uh, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Go ahead. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. He said, those that are in the flesh cannot please God. But he said, you know, uh, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let's go uh, uh, 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. Second Corinthians six, pick it up at uh, pick it up at verse one. Go ahead. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. He said, you know, uh, as workers together, we beg you that you don't receive this grace for nothing. He said, you know, because he said, I've heard them in the time accepted, and the day of salvation I've secured them. Go ahead. Behold, now is, a, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. He said, because you don't know when your time is. The book said your time is always. So you don't know when, you know, uh, um, 
how much time you got. So you got to always try to keep this thing right. Go ahead. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blank. Go ahead. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience. So he going to let you know, you know, some of the conditions. You know, because the book said, we read over in Revelation, he that endured to the end shall be saved. You know, to he, uh, Revelation 2, he said, he that overcome will I uh, uh, give to eat of the tree of life freely. So now he's letting you know some conditions that you might find yourself in. And then whatever those conditions are, you still got to serve God. So he says, you know, uh, as workers together, we beg you that you do not receive this grace for nothing. And now he's going to let you know that sometimes things ain't going to always be well with you. But you got to remember that you vowed that you was going to walk in the newness of life. That all your past was forgiven. It was a gift. You didn't earn that. But now he's going to tell you. Go ahead. Uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 4. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience and affliction. So you might be being afflicted. You still got to approve. Be show yourself approved of God. You might be going through some stuff. He says in patience, in afflictions, you might be needing something or you might be in distress. But remember, you are under grace. Grace should not be subject to the conditions that you are in. The conditions are going to change. That grace is supposed to be forever. He says, you know, in all things, approving ourselves as the minister of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. Go ahead. In stripes, in prison, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fasting. You might, you might be going through some of this or all of it. The Lord tried Abraham. So you distressed a little bit. Maybe you got to spend a week in jail. You might even have to be beheaded for the word of God. But whatever the condition is, you said you was going to serve God. And if you say you got faith, then now it's time to put your money where your mouth is. So he says, you know, uh, uh, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. Go ahead. By pureness. And you do this by pureness. Go ahead. By knowledge. By knowledge. You, you need to be pure in your faith and your zeal toward God and know something. He said uh, by pureness, by knowledge. Go ahead. By long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth. By the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report. Whatever the conditions, by evil report or by good report. Go ahead. As deceivers and yet true. Because people are going to look at you as a deceiver. Yeah. And yet you true. You're still supposed to remain faithful to your word to God. Amen. To God as your master. But go ahead. As unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live as. You know, a... you might be at death's door. You still got to serve God. Because mm -hmm. God is able to give you life. Right. He said, you know, as dying and behold, we live. As chasing and not kill. The Lord might be going upside your head. Mm -hmm. He didn't kill you. Yeah. <laughs> you still supposed to serve. Keep going. As sorrowful. Yet always rejoicing as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. You say you may not have nothing, and yet you possess all things. You possess everything you need to get into the kingdom. I was just thinking on the way here, you know, the Lord been blessing me. And I was just thinking on the way here, Lord, if you never give me nothing else, just don't take what you've given me. Let me be content with whatever I have. I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, you can't take the job, can't take the money, can't take the car, the house, whatever it is. Let them have it. But just don't take the word from me. Amen. 
don't take the spirit that I want to serve God. Because all that other stuff can come again. But we're going to read that once you lose this, you in trouble. So Paul is letting you know that whatever condition you find yourself in, you still got to serve God. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse, at verse 5. Second Peter 1 and 5. And besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtues, virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience. So he letting you know that despite all the stuff that you might be going through, you're still supposed to be growing. Mm -hmm. You might lack like patience. You need to try to add some patience. You might lack self-control. You need to learn how to have self-control. But you still need to be growing. You know, the book says that we are, uh, that the Word of God was for the perfecting of the saints. That is an active process. We're supposed to be growing. And so he says, beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience. Go ahead. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was, want, that he was purged from his old he said, sin. if you like these things, you blind. You can't see. You've forgotten that you were purged from your old sins. Go ahead. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to the making, your calling and election sure. He said, give diligence. Work at it to make your calling and election sure. Go ahead. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. Go ahead. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly, into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, he Jesus Christ. He said you Christ. will never fail, and an interest will be ministered unto you into the kingdom. Go ahead. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. He said, I don't want to be negligent to always remind you that we're supposed to be working toward the kingdom. That's what this grace was for. It was to give us an entrance into the kingdom. And he said, make your call in an election sure. So he says, I would not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Go ahead. Though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. And be established in the present truth. That's where I got that from, the title, yeah. Grace. Because it is a present truth. We are currently under grace. And it is a truth. It is the word of God. And it is a gift. It is a present. But we under grace, and so we're supposed to be reminded of what this thing is about and how we're supposed to maintain this because, like I said, you know, that once saved, always saved. Scripture don't support that. You can mess this up. And so that's why Paul is constantly reminding them, you know, to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you once knew them. He said, you know, that you may be established. In the present truth. Let's go to uh, Hebrews the 10th chapter. Hebrews the 10th chapter. Hebrews 10. And verse 26. So he's talking about here. After you come under grace. 
Hebrews 10 and 26. Go ahead and read it, brother. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Christ died once. That's it. You don't get to do this over. If we decide that we're going to do this our way, he said, ain't no more sacrifice for sin. This is what you can look forward to. Go ahead. But a certain fearful looking. Certain fearful looking for. Certain. You can be certain that it's coming. Certain fearful looking for of judgment. Go ahead. And fiery indignation. We shall devour the adversary. He said, you, you got that kind. He said, you can be certain that there's going to be a fiery indignation. And it's going to be fearful. He says it's going to despise, uh, devour the adversaries. Go ahead. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. He said the one that despised Moses' law. You know, if they found you guilty, they would take you out of stone. He said, you know, uh, they, they died without mercy under two or three witnesses. And that was just the animal sacrifices. You know, they were still doing animal sacrifices, but they still, they if they found you just sinning willfully, they would take you out and stone you. Mm -hmm. Wasn't no sacrifice. But now he's going to tell you, we ain't under that no more. What about now since we're under the blood of Christ? Go ahead. Of how much sore punishment? He said now he's talking about a sore punishment now because we're under the blood of Christ. How much sore punishment, suppose you? Go ahead. Shall he be thought worthy? Who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant. Where well, we the blood of the covenant, that's what gave you grace. You had to be under the blood. So now he's talking about those that have come under grace and have decided to walk away. So he says, of how much sore punishment suppose you? Shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified? Go ahead. An unholy thing. And have done despite unto the spirit of grace. He said a sore punishment. It was bad enough to get stoned. I would probably prefer that than to know I'm going in the fire and will never get out. Yeah. He said that's a worse punishment. Verse thir uh, 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. He said it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You don't want to fall into the hands of God. You want to come up under his blood. Let's go to uh, Psalms, the 19th chapter. Psalms, the 19th chapter. Psalms, 19. Let me pick it up at verse 17. Psalms, 19. And seven. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warm, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. He said, Cleanse me from secret faults. Because, you know, you don't want to uh, sin willfully. And those things that, you know, may even be hidden from you, you want the Lord to clean you up from that. We're supposed to be getting better, we're not supposed to be going backwards. We're supposed to be going forward. We say that we servants of God, that we're supposed to live and act like we servants of God. We're supposed to be moving forward. Where are we at? Verse 13. Read, finish that verse. I'm starting. Start at 13. Go ahead. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. He said, keep me back from presumptuous sins, because those presumptuous sins are the ones that can get you cut off. When you just decide that, you know, that's why he was talking about the carnal mind is enmity against, it's opposed to the word of God. It's not even subject to the law of God because you're going to do it your way. People are always talking about, I'm grown. 
You need to read about all them grown people that the Lord killed. And he's going to kill a lot of grown people again. But he said, keep back that servant from presumptuous sins. Go ahead. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. He said, then will I be upright, and I will be innocent of the great transgression. That's the one that's going to get you cut off. Let's go to uh, Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans, the sixth chapter. scripture but go ahead uh Romans 6 and 1 y'all forgive me I gotta find the scripture because I keep saying it and um I need to find it um I thought I had 6 and 1 go ahead what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound God forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Well, that's what you said when you came under grace, that you was going to walk in the newness of life. He says, you know, uh, uh, is it okay to continue to sin? that we may get uh, more grace. He said in the, Roman, in the third chapter of Romans, he said, you know, uh, uh, we established the law. Now we established the law in our life because before we were living lawless. But now we established the law. So now he asked the question, is it okay to sin that we may get more grace? He said, God forbid. How are we that are dead to sin? That's what baptism represents, the death and burial of that old man and the resurrection of a new man that's going to walk in the newness of life. So he said, uh, uh, don't you know that if you were baptized into Jesus, you were baptized into his death, that we are buried with him by baptism into death, and that like as Jesus was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, we also should walk in the newness of life. Verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. And that's what we want. We want to be in the likeness of his resurrection. So we got to die with him. We got to kill off that old man. But go ahead. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also, that, excuse me, now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he dead, for in that he he died, he died unto sin once. But unto that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. He said you're supposed to be dead to sin and alive to Christ. Christ, you've been bought and paid for. Christ died for you. You were supposed to die. Mm -hmm. So now you're supposed to be dead to sin and you're supposed to live to Christ. But go ahead. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked 
that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being go then, go ahead, keep reading. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. He said, "You were the servants of sin, but then you started obeying the doctrine which was delivered, and then you were made free from sin." Once you start obeying the doctrine, because in order to come under grace and remain under grace, you gotta have faith. But in order to remain under faith, you got uh, uh, remain under grace. You gotta obey. So he says, you know, uh, um, uh, you were the servant of sin, but you obeyed from the heart that doctrine that was delivered to you, and you became the servant of righteousness. Let's go to. Uh, Let's go to Matthew, the 19th chapter. Y'all gonna read this. I'm gonna find this scripture because I'm not gonna <laughs> stand here and not find this scripture. But Matthew 19. Matthew 19, pick it up at verse 16. Matthew 19 and 16. 19 and 16, go ahead. Remember, we read over in uh, Corinthians, if there had been a law which could have given life, righteousness would have been by the law. Well, this was long, you know, uh, long after the Lord had given the, the, the covenant to Moses, to Israel on Mount Sinai. And this is what Jesus asked, uh, uh, told this man when he asked him, how can he get life? Matthew 19 and 16, go ahead. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. That's real simple. Man asked him a simple question. He gave him a simple answer. Because there is a law that could have given life. And there still is a law that can give life. The problem now is that we have become so accustomed to breaking it. It's almost nature. Now we still need a sacrifice. But we still got to make every effort to keep that law that was given to us from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Let's go to... Uh, Hebrews, the ninth uh, chapter. That's what I forgot. I forgot to put it on here, but I knew I was like, I can't. Because I keep saying that that promise had more to do than just some land. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Pick it up, uh, He's talking about the, the covenant and how, you know, when he was under the old covenant, that all of that was a shadow. Uh, verse 8, pick it up at verse 8. The Holy Ghost, this signifying the, that the way into the Holy... You know, because he's talking about how the, the priests on the Day of Atonement would go into the second veil once a year and offer up a sacrifice, not just for other people, but for himself as well, because he was human. He was going to mess up. He said, uh, 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 which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while that first tabernacle was standing. So the way to before the throne of God was not yet manifest while their first tabernacle was standing. But go ahead. Which was a figure for the time then present, in which we all, which were offered both gifts and sacrifice that could not make him that did the service perfect. You know, because we, under that old covenant, we were offering up all those sacrifices, and we read in the 10th chapter. We couldn't change the, uh, 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 it would have made uh, change of conscience, you know. Uh, cleans you up so then you could stop offering up the same sacrifice because then you'd be doing it right. 
But he says, you know, it was a figure for the time near present of which were offered gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Go ahead. Which stood only in meats and drinks and divers' washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. For the, it was imposed on them. They had to do that until the time of reformation. And the time of, reforma of reformation, excuse me, was when Christ was going to come and become that perfect sacrifice. But go ahead. But Christ being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Go ahead. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. He said, you know, if that uh, sets you apart to clear, uh, cleaning of the flesh, go ahead, to the purifying of the flesh, go ahead. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot. He said, how much more would the blood of Christ, which is that grace, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who the through the eternal spirit, Offer himself without spot because that old priest we used to have, the high priest, he had to offer up a sacrifice for himself because he was spotted. Mm -hmm. He said, so now how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, go ahead. Purge your conscience from dead work. That's what we needed. We needed our conscience purged. We needed to let go of that old stuff. And we needed to walk in the newness of life. So it says, uh, 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 purge your conscience from dead works. Go ahead. To serve the living God. He said, how much, he, how much, uh, uh, how much more shall Christ offering purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Go ahead. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. He said, for this cause, he is the mediator of a New Testament. That is the time of Reformation. But he said that the, for this cause, he is the mediator of a New Testament. Go ahead. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. He that, said, you know, uh, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. Even those that had sinned under the Old Covenant, what would they get? Go ahead. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. That they might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. That's what that promise was all about. Mm -hmm. Israel got went to that land and got kicked out many times. Finally in 70 AD, they got kicked out for the last time. But this time, we got much more than land coming. We have eternal life coming with that promise. That's what it was always about. Israel was going to go back and they was going to serve their God in righteousness and they were going to live forever with the Lord in that land. And the book tells you not just Israel. I know Israel going back, but others are going back too. So he says, uh, uh, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, that they which are called might receive the promise. He made a promise to Abraham. And that promise had more to do with eternal redemption than it did with just a piece of land. Let's go now to uh, Romans, the sixth chapter, and this will be last. Romans 6 and 23. I'm not discounting that land. The Lord said that was the glory of all lands. I'm not discounting that. But I understand the bigger picture too. The bigger picture had to do with where you were going to live eternally. Because you can go to that land and you can still end up in the fire. Because when the Lord comes, there's going to be some flesh and blood still on this earth. He's going to change the righteous that is coming. But there's still going to be some flesh and blood. And at the second, you know, at the second, uh, um, second resurrection, you know, everybody going to be judged. And that's when people going into the fire. But the kingdom is still going to be established here on earth in the land of Israel. Let's go to uh, Romans 6. And we're going to read this. And this is last. 6 and 23. Go ahead. 
For the wages of sin is death. That's what you earn. If you sin, you have earned a spot in the fire. The wages is death. Go ahead. But the gift of God that is grace. The gift of God is grace. And that grace is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So either you're going to earn your spot in the kingdom or you're going to earn a spot in the fire. But those are your only options. So Paul said, you know, I would not be remiss to remind you, though you knew these things, that you would never forget what this thing was all about. So thank you, and I thank you for your time. Our Father, Our Father which, art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever. In Jesus holy and mighty name we pray. In Jesus holy and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus name. In Jesus name.